Here we are at Hotel Football, just across the road from Old Trafford. Ryan Giggs and Gary Neville doing a press conference today about a special partnership they've created with the Marriott Hotel. And to find out a bit more, let's go inside. Ryan Giggs and Gary Neville were here at the uh, wonderful press conference for Hotel Football. Uh, it's a very exciting time, you've just joined uh, the Marriott. When you were uh, footballers, every single week you had a game to motivate you, you had something to get up in the morning to drive you. Is it something like this, this press conference here, that like, still gives you that motivation, that ambition to, to make things just hotel football up there on the world stage? Definitely, I think it's exciting for us. You know, we started the hotel four years ago and to, the way that we've seen it evolve, you know, I mentioned in the press conference how much we enjoy being here. And then now, you know, someone like Marriott Bonvoy uh, partnering with, with them is, is exciting for us because we, 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 see, we see development and, you know, you talk about getting up and motivated as football. Well, it's the same in, in our business aspect as well. You know, we want to improve. We want to get better. We don't think that we know everything. Yeah. We're, we're learning along the way, but, um, you know, we want to become the best, just like we were as footballers. So, I'm a mag lad, and obviously the football United fan, just get out of there. Football only comes around, like, what, 30, like you say, 30 days. Is there anything you're going to work with Manchester in tourist boards or anything like that to make more attractive stuff come to the city? Yeah, Manchester does work uh, along with Salford and Trafford very hard in terms of trying to bring events to the city. Think of all the music events, the sporting events outside of obviously the football city United that go on. It's, it's absolutely incredible. And you think about the sort of festivals, the markets, the international festival, the, the Christmas markets, all these things bring... Uh, you know, tourists to the city. It's not something that you can do individually on your own as a hotel. It's something that, to be fair, people are working daily on in, in, in the city councils and boroughs. Um, and we obviously have close discussions with them. They're always discussing it with the hotel partners um, about what the guests want, what, 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 the, what the experience needs to be. We think we're delighted with our experience. We obviously don't have a city centre location with hotel football, but we have a location that's you know within a mile yeah, of the city centre. Tram stops and stuff. It's a great location. The, the tram stop now literally is 100 yards yeah. from where uh, we are. We've obviously got Manchester United here. We've got the Trafford Centre sort of a mile one way. We've got the city centre a mile the other. We've got Media City and um, obviously the sort of Lowry outlets a mile that way. We literally are central mm. to what is going to be a hub of activity and you can see the city spreading out from Manchester all, all you know down that sort of it is bit by bit spreading out towards Trafford towards Salford uh, and I think it'll all become one to be honest with you like London in the next few years and everything will sort of merge together and I know that the, the councils do work very closely together and we want to be a, you know obviously a bigger part of that as we possibly can understanding that we're a very small part of the hotel market in Manchester. You as footballers go through the Youth Academy for United I suppose then when you start going to the first team you travel around the world would you ever uh, hotel where you remember where you walked in and was like wow we're staying here for the first team something something that just blew your mind for, for the first couple of years it was every hotel we went in <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> we've never stayed at anything like it I, mean, I remember the first my first game I was ever in the squad for was a game against Torpedo Moscow here at Old Trafford and we met up at I think at Old Trafford about half 11 and went into the Midland Hotel yeah. in Manchester and stayed there and thinking, oh my, this is like out of this world. I mean, obviously, just think this huge building. I've never stayed in a hotel like it in my life before. So no, I think that for the first few years, and then there have been some outstanding hotels. We were very lucky to have with England, Wales, and United had incredible experience. Because we, to be fair, the, the, the standards are high when you're talking about what, where Manchester United stay. They stay at the best hotels mm -hmm. available in that city that we're going to. Uh, or sometimes compromised by location because it wants to be near a ground, but generally the hotel standards are fantastic. I think that was one of the things that we, uh, why we wanted to get into this because of our experiences traveling around. Uh, one, of, one of our great frustrations was, to be fair, the idea of being, you know, the idea of having being charged for the Wi Fi or you know, charge extortionate prices for the minibar, and that's why we brought into this brand. No minibar when you were playing, though. No, no, but, no but to be <laughs> honest, I measure a hotel by a few things, to be honest with you. The food, yeah. the minibar, <laughs> and the comfort of the bed. And obviously it's got to be clean. 
So we think we deliver on all those four key things and the Wi-Fi has got to be strong. So for me, for me that is a, the, you know, the core elements of a hotel experience. And we think that on this, in this particular hotel, we do that really well. You can tell we've got young kids, can't you? Wi-Fi is yeah, very important. That's all they ask for, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, yeah, Wi-Fi food, yeah. minibar and bed and clean. Yeah. Did you it. ever, um, <laughs> apart from roommates, <laughs> ever, were you ever roommates? Uh, or who was your roommates okay. when you went to hotels? No. What was it? I roomed with Phil. I, I roomed with Bex initially, but then with Phil because we were compatible in sleeping. You room with? I was room with. I was that Paul Ince, who likes to stay up late <laughs> and get up late, and I was the complete opposite. And then um, Nicky a few times, which was also a nightmare yeah. because he don't. No snorers. No, no, no. Andy no. Cole on you for a long yeah, time. Yeah, Coley for a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. With um, Ollie over across the road now, uh, taking charge. You you look at Manchester uh, United, and there's that positive atmosphere. Does that ever creep in with the hotel? Because obviously, yeah. after a negative result, I can imagine. <laughs> The hotel uh, staff room, the hotel oh, guests are a bit like, oh. Absolutely. I mean, look, kickoff t- timings are important in yeah. terms of whether the hotel's busy pre match or post match, but the, the result and the mood has a massive impact. Um, in terms of whether fans want to come back and feel like a drink after, whether they come yeah. back and feel like they want to eat, or they just want to think, no, I want to go home, oh, I have enough. <laughs> and that, no, that's, we, we've seen that for the last three, four years, that the mood of the fans is paramount to how well the hotel does on a match day. People think the hotel does incredibly well on a match day. We're probably, like I think Winston mentioned it in the press conference, we're 80% occupancy on non-match days. So we're successful during the non-match days as well. But obviously in terms of the fans, they're certainly a lot happier after, even yesterday. Yeah. You know, they were really happy yesterday. The atmosphere was outstanding yesterday and they all came back happy, even yeah. though it was nil-nil. Uh, whoever gets the job next season, what should their targets be, realistic targets, for Manchester United next season? Uh, top four, even fighting for the title. So whoever gets it, no matter who you think should get it, what should their targets be for next season? Well, I mean, at Manchester United, the target should always be to try and win the league. Mm-hmm. Um, but also recognising, being realistic, um, the, what we've gone through since Sir Alex, you know, the, the recruitment hasn't been good enough. And I think the thing with Ollie, I think he will recognise the Manchester United player. So whether he's successful or not, hope he is successful if he gets the job, then I think he'll leave the club whenever it is if he does get the job in a better place because he'll have Manchester United players at the club um, but yeah I mean I, I think everyone recognises obviously City Liverpool are the teams to beat at the mm-hmm. moment Tottenham are obviously strong but um, no the start of the season should always be to try and compete for the for the Premier League and we have got a lot of quality at the club but I think still three or four short yeah. um, to be coming um, competing for the title but yeah hopefully we'll get them players in the summer you've got a nice team here and you guys work together you can always be in contact with each other with, with Ollie do you think it's good that he's got McFeelin there with him and Michael Carrick so it's not just him is it he's, he's got a team he's got a lovely group of people that he can just go to and throw ideas down and, yeah. and, and like, like you guys have here it's essential. We, 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 we don't run this hotel. We come in here and, to be fair, eat here or have the odd meeting here during the week, but we don't run the hotel in any way, shape or form. We don't have any influence over it whatsoever. We, you know, the team do that and have done for four years. And without that, we, we haven't got a hotel. The hotel, hotel is people-based. This, this is just a building. It's a framework. It's, it could be anything. It could be apartments. It could be an office. It's a hotel, so it needs service. And service, hotel is all about service and people and the guests the staff if that relationship isn't good then as owners of this hotel we are finished so we are absolutely in the hands of the staff here and what i would say is there are members of staff over the last four years it's quite a transient industry where people leave but people come back and that's the great side is that when people do sometimes leave the hotel to go and try maybe a city center experience because they want to work in the city center they come back within six months 12 months because they recognize it is quite a, a real unique atmosphere working here and we, we love it for that. Communication, I want to talk about management uh, quickly before I wrap up. The, what we saw yesterday with the Chelsea game and that bizarre moment with the manager <laughs> tries to get the goalkeeper off, Kepper having none of it. I mean, that's communication is important in between who's in charge. What did you make of that situation? You'd never do that as a player. I mean, you, you wouldn't have no. scared of Sir Alex. It was I, a bit. I think, crazy. to be honest with you, in any other business, the employee would be sacked. Yeah. But this is football, it's a completely different business. And actually, also, if you just sit back, emotions sometimes run high and you do things which, to be fair, are not normal in football matches. You know, I think back to things that I did sometimes on the football pitch, and I've never hit none in my life. 
But then I you know, went to Ed Butt, Steve McManaman on the football pitch in a the, in the big game. I, I, why did I do that? I've never done that ever. So you just do things sometimes that let yourself down and sometimes make mistakes in rash situations. And that just probably has to be reflected upon. Um, I think if you're a player in the dressing room, you're pulling him in line if you've got a strong dressing room. I think if you're a manager, you probably want to discipline him to the highest level. I think if you're an owner, you've got to say financially and economically it isn't going to work to sack him because we're going to lose 70 million pounds. So you're in a situation whereby you've got these sort of morals and principles and values pulling people say, oh, what would Sir Alex do? Well, Sir Alex had complete control of the football club. Sir Alex was in a completely different era and situation. It's not as easy just saying, oh, he should be this or he should be that. And players, to be fair, I've made mistakes myself as a player, but it was, a, it was an awful situation to watch from an ex-professional's point of view, a coach's point of view. It's the worst case scenario because Sarri's an experienced coach on the touchline. I had a scenario in Valencia, and I was thinking about that yesterday, where I wanted to make a substitution. One of my centre-backs was coming off. And I went to make another. I went. I was about to bring Negredo on, who was a centre forward, and I, to, I went to change it to bring a fullback on, um, to bring sorry to bring a defender on to replace my centre back who was going off, and the fans just went absolutely wild. I mean, I'd lost the crowd. They went absolutely mad, and I remember. I remember the staff on the bench thinking, "You're gonna have to put Negredo on." And I went, "Yeah, but we, we need a defender on." But you, this crowd will just, you'll be out of here in 10 yeah. minutes. And, and in the end, you look back upon that as an experience and think, I wish I'd just put the defender on and took the hit, because I was going to take the hit anyway and don't want to want it. But then you're putting the grade one, which is what the fans wanted, but then you look weak and you're dead. So, I mean, now it was right near the end that in the last couple of games. It was against Atletico Madrid, we were losing 2 0, so we were finished anyway. Uh, but it, yesterday I had a bit of, it was difficult for Sarri because it's a unique situation. You just don't know how you're going to react on the bench. It's difficult. Well, that's nearly it for me. I want to say thank you very much for a happy childhood. Thank um, you. For today, hope all goes well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.